Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters and today we're going to be building the Bandai 172nd scale resistance X-Wing fighter. Let's get started on it. Okay, the first thing I want to show you guys is the instructions of this kit. And as you look at them right here, there's not a heck of a lot of instructions to go through because it's a fairly simple kit to put together and it is a snap together kit. Although I will be using uh, glue to make sure everything stays together. One thing I'll point out to you too though is you really have to look ahead because painting this kit will be a little difficult if you completely assemble it the way they show without taking proper steps to make sure you paint certain parts without you know gluing them together first. So let me show you the parts uh, on the sprues and then let's get to building. Okay, what I'm going to do right here is I'm test fitting the, the model, not actually pushing down and engaging the snaps together. What we're going to do next is we're going to paint the entire model, all the parts that at least that are that light 
whitish gray. What I did was take 20 parts white to two parts gray uh, to me as XF66, just two little drops inside of there. And that was enough to paint the entire model and actually keep it virtually the same color, but just not shiny plastic looking. It looks more painted. Next up, we're gonna start on the decals. And in this portion right here, I'm not going to speed up the film at all. So, because a lot of people have asked me questions about actually watching doing the decaling. So this way, I'll let you actually see the decaling one-to-one -one time. I've cut out some of the slow parts, but uh, it'll give you a general idea how the decals go down and how many coats of like Microsol you're gonna have to put onto them to get them to conform to all the little compound curves or any bumps that are on the model itself.
In this step right here, I've taken NATO black once again, and I'm starting to spray some of the exhaust and some of the end tips and stuff, things that we want to get a little bit of a, uh, like a sooty color too. Okay, this is the completed model uh, with a general paint job on it, and we're going to weather it up a little bit from here. You might also notice that on the, looking at the model, the right wings, I actually messed up one of the decals after putting clear coat on it. The decal came up, and what I did was I actually just masked it off and repainted it. Didn't like the what it was looking like, so I decided to put two blast marks down the side of that. So. I could have repainted the entire model, but I thought it looks decent with the blast marks, and we're going to dirty it up a little bit more in the next step anyway. So, here we go. In this step right here, I'm taking Tamiya's Weathering Master, their actual black color, or soot they call it, and we're just going over lightly some of the high points to make them pop out a little bit. And following up that step, we're going to go ahead and take a little bit of Vallejo's wash of the medium gray and added a little, little rubbing alcohol to it to thin it down a little bit and just going over some of the other little cracks and stuff to make them pop a little bit.
And here we go. This is the completed model. Uh, you can see the little blast marks I put up on the upper wing there. Um, and a little bit, not too, too dirty on this one. And I know a lot of people have complained about the bases on these. I haven't really done anything to these bases. They're, they are what they are. They're just basic bases and they're more of a, a holding place to keep the model in, in position while you're, you know, detailing it and painting and weathering and things like that. Y you probably could go and put real sand on it or something like that to really make it pop. But for this purpose, this is mainly dealing with the vehicle itself. So I hope you enjoyed our video and stay tuned because we have a lot more coming. Thank you.